morning, everyone, and welcome to our AgriTech um, webinar. We're so excited that you can join us here today. And at this point, um, my name is Ulubu Miyadelaye, and I, I have responsibility for corporate comms at Leadway. I, I, I'm not the host for today. I shall be handing over to the um, astute Ake Alabi, who will be your host for today. Good morning again and welcome. Ake, over to you. Thank you very much, Bumi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, everyone. It's been a busy and a wet Sunday, a wet uh, morning here in Lagos today. Uh, this is the Leadway Assurance Company and Security Exchange Commission Agritech webinar. And I want to welcome everybody coming on board, uh, the panel of the, the panelists for the discussion, the guests, and everyone that is coming here to join us for this great webinar. Once again, my name is Aki Alabi. I'm an agribusiness coach, and also I'm the co-founder at Corporate Farmers International. Without wasting much of our time, uh, we're going to go straight into the welcome address. And to do justice to that, I'll be pulling on board uh, Mr. Ayoola Fatana. He is uh, head agri and micro uh, micro insurance at Leadway Assurance Company. So, Mr. Ayala, kindly take us through the welcome address for this uh, awesome agritech webinar. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Aki, and uh, uh, welcome everyone to this uh, webinar platform. Every webinar uh, series on agritech organized by Legal Assurance Company Limited in uh, collaboration with Security and Exchange Commission. Uh, we are all aware that uh, uh, cash funding uh, or word of uh, is actually an, auto, an, an orthodox uh, way or method of uh, receiving funds to finance uh, various kinds of projects. And over the past three to four years, this particular uh, activity have gained a lot of ground in the Nigeria business space, especially as it relates to investment in agriculture. There have been a lot of uh, crowdfunding activity going on, and uh, especially for younger, the young guys and the younger attacks that are actually technologically aware, they use this crowdfunding as a method of uh, crowding uh, finances from the public and investing in agri project. And, uh, Recently, too, uh, Security and Safety Commission had come up with a regulation which is expected to actually regulate the activities within that particular kind of crowdfunding space. And it is because of this particular uh, regulation uh, now decided as did with the conjunction with said to actually throw more insight into how this regulation works and how it's going to affect the operation of all the stakeholders that is involved in crowdfunding in Nigeria, especially as it relates to agriculture, and especially with the activities of the agri-tech uh, uh, platform uh, drivers. So we are here to actually build our capacity, learn about uh, 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 and that's why we actually brought in somebody that is actually a, a big fish in sect in the person of Mr. Emono Tomi Agama, who is actually a very, very, very close friend of yours or of Lidwi to actually do our insight into, to give us further insight into how this regulation will work and affect the activities. So I will enjoy everybody to actually go ahead and have a nice time with their capacity and learn so that they don't be able to uh, know what to actually to do concerning crowdfunding and agri-tech operations. Thank you very much. Welcome everybody. And I hope you have a nice time. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ayola Fatano. Uh, I call him one of the genius or the brain uh, behind the agri insurance sector today in the Nigerian insurance market. Thank you for that uh, opening uh, remarks. And also welcome again, everyone joining us on board for this great Agritech webinar organized by Leadway Assurance Company and the Security Exchange Commission, SEC, known as SEC. So uh, right about now, uh, we're bringing on board uh, the main man uh, from the Security and Exchange Commission, and that is uh, Mr. Tommy Agama, uh, to be giving us the, explaining to us the new SEC agri tech regulation. But before that, I need to read to you uh, the bio of who exactly Mr. Agama is. So Mr. Agama holds a bachelor's um, in accountancy, he degrees from the River State University of Science and Technology, and also a master's degree in economics 
and Banking and Finance from the University of Benin. He's also alumni of the George Washington School of Business prior to joining the S Security and Exchange Commission. He has worked in the Office of the Accountant General as well as lectured at his alma mater, the University of Benin. He is currently the head of Regulation, Exchanges, Market, Infrastructure, and Innovation Department at the Security and Exchange Commission. So without wasting more time, I'm going to bring on board Mr. Tommy, Mr. Mr. Gamma to now explain to Ross, you know, in depth of what the SEC regulation is all about within the Agritech uh, platform and also regulating the crowdfunding activities within the agricultural sector. So over to you now, Mr. Agama, to for the uh, quick uh, presentation. Over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Alavi. Uh, my name is uh, Matimi Agama. We can call it Timi, call me Timi Agama for short. And uh, precisely this afternoon or morning rather, I'll just uh, try as much as possible to bring to for what the new regulation is. And what is that regulation? Is the rule on crowdfunding. Uh, Mr. Fatina had uh, alluded to the fact that it is new. Yes, indeed it is new. What will we be talking about? We'll be talking about this newness and why it came about. So clearly, uh, it's something that has hit the waves and everybody is interested to know exactly what they need to do. Of course, ignorance of the law at this instance becomes uh, is, uh, no excuse. I mean, we face the full wrath of the law. And it is important that uh, we find opportunity or, or accept opportunities like these to explain to the general public what we mean, what we intend, and what we expect going forward. And so um, that's why we're here. So before moving to this uh, slides, particularly or specifically, just want to let you know, section 13 of the Investment and Securities Act 2007 specifically states, that the Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, the Commission, should regulate investments and securities business in Nigeria. That's law. It is not a. It's not a guideline. It's not a secular. You know, it's not a newspaper publication. It is the law. And of course, once there is a law, it means there's also a sanction. So, if you do not obey the law, then it presupposes that you are expecting the full weight of the law to come upon you when you don't obey the law. But for the SEC, we know that there are a lot of challenges, even in an attempt by a lot of institutions to raise capital. Capital raising Part section 56 of the same ISC by public companies must come under the regulation of the SEC. However, it was discovered that a lot of institutions that want to raise capital do not fall into the brackets of public limited liability companies. Because the law emphasizes that for you to raise capital, you must be or you should be a public limited liability company. If you have to raise capital from the public, you should be a public limited liability company, a PLC. But that is not the case here. Because we discovered that and uh, we know that capital is the life wire of any business or every business, there must be a way around it. What is that way around it? It is that way around it and the solution that has to be provided that had cost the SEC to take in another turn or rather to look another way in at getting people to raise capital within regulation. In the US, 
the law that gives power to the rule on crowdfunding is called the Jobs Act. And principally, the essence of the Jobs Act was to breathe life into small and medium scale enterprises that need money from, in quotes, the public. And for you to be able to do that, you need to, of course, satisfy the rules on crowdfunding. And that is why in Nigeria, the SEC also thinking forward and being a knowledge-based organization decided also to follow that path. And so we came up with the rules on crowdfunding. More importantly, because we have seen serially that a lot of institutions are raising money from the public, from investors who are our primary concern as the SEC. Who are our primary concerns as the SEC? The SEC has a two-pronged objective. One of them is regulation. The other one is market development. And in regulation, the investors are critical participants and stakeholders in regulation. And for the SEC, we cannot close our eyes and watch investors being dealt with by people for no fault of theirs and because they don't have knowledge. We have seen severally that a lot of people just go out there, ask people who do not understand or who are unsuspecting and raise money from them and go into the thin air because there is no regulation. So in order to deal with this situation, hence the SEC came out with the rules on crowdfunding. The rules have been in work for a long time. Before 2020, of course, there was no regulation. As, but soon after, when we saw what was happening, by March 2020, the SEC exposed its first draft on the crowdfunding rules on our website. By December, we have moved forward and the rules were approved by the SEC's board. In January 2021, the same rules were released to the public, giving a compliance deadline of 30th of June 2021. And of course, Having given that deadline of comp compliance at June 20, 2020, for those institutions that had earlier on been involved in this. So at this point, we are saying that you should come and register and sing no more. But if you have failed to come and register, it means you want to continue singing. What that means is that you enter into our enforcement trap and the full weight of the law will be meted on you. So that is the storyline. Having spoken about the storyline, let's go to the main subject matter. This is education. That's what we call it. So in education, we ought to know and understand so I'm going, be, I'm going to be acting more like a teacher here because what am I explaining? I'm not explaining an idea of my own. I'm explaining the rules as has been crafted and approved by the SEC. So for the rules, it has the first part with the general provision and two, the second part, crowdfunding portal requirements. Part three talks about the obligations of the crowdfunding intermediary. Part four, participants for crowdfunding. And part five, requirements with respect to transactions. And part six, obligations of the fundraiser. Part seven are the restrictions. Part eight, additional requirements for commodities investment platforms, which is the main subject matter here, which is the crux of the matter here. And of course, part nine, miscellaneous, and part 10, penalties. Penalties when there is a violation of the law. So fundraisers, who are they? What are they? 
There are the people that want to raise funds. There are the people that need money to do whatever business they want to do. But those people, of course, decided or elected to go through the crowdfunding route rather than going through the IPOs, the public offerings, and other forms of capital raising. So fundraisers issue are seeking to raise capital via crowdfunding, small and medium scale enterprises. Inclusive of this group of people are agri companies or agri tech companies, as the case may be. The crowdfunding platforms used to crowdfund is what we're talking about. Then, of course, you have crowdfunding intermediaries. Crowdfunding intermediaries. And we have also the investors who want to invest in these platforms. So who want to invest in these businesses, as the case may be, right? So this is what we are all experiencing, experiencing now. This is novel. It is new. It never used to be so. So people really didn't understand or didn't know that there was there existed opportunities like this. Prior to this time, it was family and friends that would raise money for you to do business. But as time goes on, it was discovered that you could actually raise money beyond family and friends. And if you want to raise good money, of course, beyond family and friends would make a lot of sense. And so the essence of crowdfunding. What is the applicability of these rules? These rules apply only to investment-based crowdfunding portals or platforms. Why do we need to specify this? We need to specify this because crowdfunding goes beyond investment. You have what we call donation-based crowdfunding, right? For a donation-based crowdfunding, it is not under the purview of the SEC. Donation-based crowdfunding is not under the purview of the SEC. So it doesn't come under us, and we don't have any business with it. Can everybody hear me? Because I can see a shot saying they can't hear somebody. I can hear you clearly, sir. Great, fantastic. I can, I can also hear you clearly, sir. No, no, I'm clear, yeah. Good. So who and who can raise funds? Who can raise funds through an investment-based crowdfunding platform? One of them is, of course, the MSMEs, incorporated in Nigeria with not more than two years track record. If it is not less than two years track record, if it is less than two years, then something must happen. You must have a technical partner, or at least you must have a core investor. That must be known. So the question is, oh, people will say, why do you have to introduce such a rule? How would we introduce such a rule? Do I just give anybody money because the person came from, you know, heaven or from Mars? No. Okay, I do not know you, but is there somebody that has a record, a track record that can vouch for you? Is there somebody that can stand behind you to say, well, I have this pedigree. And because you know my pedigree, I have decided to loan my pedigree to this institution. So it is not that you just wake up, fly by night, investors or entrepreneurs, you dreamt yesterday night, and this morning you have decided to come and collect money from Alabi. I'm not sure Alabi will give you. So that is the essence of the track record. That is the essence of having a core investor. That is the essence of having a technical partner for whom we can be sure that that technical partner, that core investor, exactly knows what you are doing and has bought into what you are doing to support what you are doing. What are the exemptions from this? The fundraisers can offer investments without prior registration. If it is incorporated in Nigeria, accepted by a crowdfunding intermediary to use its platform. Total investments to be sold in 12 months does not exceed one for medium scale enterprises, 100 million, small enterprise, 70 million, micro enterprise, 50 million. 
But like we said, there is a uniqueness with commodity investment platforms. They need much more money to be able to stand. So for these institutions, they will definitely apply to the SEC to be excused from such limitations. The MSMEs designated by SEC are allowed to exceed this limit. Total investor investment on an investment investor can make retail not more than 10% of net annual income. So if you are an investor and you are a retail investor, we are saying that, okay, we don't want you to be put in a situation where tomorrow you come and cry. For you to start this, you cannot invest more than 10% of your annual income. Somebody will say, what's your business? Well, our business is very clear. We don't want you to lose your money and tomorrow you come and look for the SEC that you are the one that approved this. So you come and pay me back my money. So you have to start little by little. And one thing you must know, it is a new rule, a new rule that has capacity to change. And that capacity can only change when we understudy the system and we know the capability, capacity, and the knowledge of those involved in it. So I am sure somebody will be asking, why are you limiting us? We are limiting you because we want you to understand it. We want you to be involved. We want you to be soaked. And we want you to do well. So it is not that everybody will just come. And that's what had happened in every jurisdiction. The US only increased theirs just recently, about a year ago. And of course, they will increase. But besides that, we must also differentiate full public offer from miniature you know, capital raising. These are miniature capital raising. And this miniature capital raising is to help small and medium scale enterprises. If you say you are big, there's nothing stopping you from becoming really big. And for those that are big, you become a PLC, you come to the main market and raise capital. Because at that point, you have been able to introduce governance, you have been able to introduce structure, you have been able to introduce transparency in the business you are doing. Some of these people that do crowdfunding or do things related to crowdfunding are small and medium scale enterprises, one man businesses that require guidance. Hence, we need to do what we are doing. So, but if you are a sophisticated individual, or you are a QRI, HNI, you don't have limit because we know you can engage somebody to do that review for you. Investors must be on a portal operated by a registered crowdfunding intermediary. So for you to be on a portal, for you to invest, it must be on a portal operated by what? A registered crowdfunding intermediary. So compute total permissible investment limit offered by the fundraiser all investments made by it and entities under the, its control and by its predecessors within 12 months are reckoned. So those are the calculations we make in our assessment of crowdfunding portals and intermediaries. Okay. So what are the general provisions? Every portal connecting fundraisers with investors in Nigeria for investment must be operated only by entity registered by the SEC as a crowdfunding intermediary. So you cannot do this without sex registration. Any attempt to do it, we know that a lot of people are doing it. And by this lecture, we are advising that you should get registered. You should come forward to the SC for registration. This is the period of amnesty. So, because if you are not registered with us and we get hold of you, you live to tell the story. So it's important that you know that at this period of amnesty, we're also speaking to insurance companies and everybody that's part of every activity most of these people are doing, that if you are in cohort, if you are working in cohort 
with any of these institutions, you are also going to be liable. So we, we, we advise that everyone that is working with crowdfunding in, uh, portals, intermediaries, should ask them for their self-registration. If you, and I need to also make, you know, mention here, if at any point in time, in your process of wanting to register, you are facing challenge, please, please feel free to get in touch with us. Our responsibility is to develop the market. So we'll give you guidance. The SEC are not draconian. No, we are not. We are friendly to innovation. We are friendly to market participants. And so please feel free to reach out. If you do not reach us, then that means you want to be your own boss. I will help you be your own boss somewhere near Kuti. Restrictions apply to all potters in Nigeria. Potters outside Nigeria, but targeting Nigerians. You cannot be coming to collect money from Nigerians and you say you cannot, you will not get registration, or you will not be regulated. Sorry, you must be regulated. Potters outside Nigeria, but component of portal is located in Nigeria. Who can raise funds through investment-based crowdfunding platforms? I have spoken about that before. Then, where does it not apply? So it is not as if it is for everything. No, there is some level of you know management so so to speak technology service provider mainly providing infrastructure software or system to an operator operator of a communication infrastructure that enables orders to be made by whatever stock market operator of a financial platform that does aggregation these ones are not but if you are confused as to whether you really fall part of it, please make inquiry. Asking questions is very good. If you do not ask questions, you miss your way. So if you ask questions, you will never miss your way. But if you miss your way without asking questions and you find yourself inside the lions, then, then the lion will eat you. So it's important that you ask questions. And once you ask questions, you find answers. Application for registration of a crowdfunding intermediary to be made to SEC with CTC with all of these, you know, requirements. Certificate of incorporation, memos, returns on allotment, that's form sec CAC 1.1, particulars of director, auditors of audited accounts if available, uh, statement of affairs, management accounts, company profile. We want you to understand how to do things. The reason why people fear or run away from regulation is they don't want to do things properly. Everybody wants it fast, fast. You know, the highway. No, for you to say you want to run a business, for you to say you want to collect money from people, investors, citizens, unsuspecting individuals, you must learn how to do things properly. And in learning how to do things properly, you must provide certain documentation because registration is the hallmark of regulation. If you are not registered, you cannot be registered. If you are not registered, you cannot be regulated. So for you to be able to be regulated, for you to stand out with a certificate as the SEC to say, I have been held out by the SEC, then you must be able to provide all of these items that we talked about. But if you cannot provide them, let us know. If there are exemptions we can give, we will give. But if there are exemptions we cannot give, we cannot give. Imagine if a child does not have a name, how are you going to address that child? So every child must have a name, irrespective of the nature of that child. And that is only when you can address the child. And in having a name, you are registering that child. So for a CFI, you must be registered by the SEC. And it is only when you are so registered that we can now regulate you and we can now put you out as being part of a capital market operator. So SEC will only register a crowdfunding intermediary if it is satisfied of the ability of the CFI to operate an orderly, fair, and transparent system for investment through its platform. 
So we won't give you registration when we know that you are no Google Yaya. You are just, you know, anything that comes just because you want to collect money. A young man who had just finished school, okay, because he has brilliant ideas, so brilliant, which he had not tested, starts collecting money from people. And the next thing he does, he goes to buy Louis Vuitton. You know, he puts on the best shoes, the best from people's money. Because you have seen the money, right? because there's no regulation. He starts, you know, making himself appear as if he's the owner of the world for, from people's money. If you are registered, that will not happen. That will not happen. Because when we register you as a firm, we will also register your product. The fitness and properness of his board. Who are your board members? Who is overseeing you? The CEO or any other person responsible for the operations, financial management of the portal, and have not been convicted. Because if you have been convicted, then you are not eligible in or outside Nigeria of fraud or other dishonesty or any law abiding or law related to the capital market blacklisted by a professional body subjected to any disciplinary process or action by the SEC or SSROs. All of this, there must be financial soundness, competence of judgment. All of these are important that it is important that your reputation must be impeccable and with that we can register you we can regulate you we can allow you use our name as having been so registered the cfi's ability to manage risk with his business and operations a lot of people have not been able to manage risk in their life there will be ups and downs in the business do you know or understand how to deal with such ups and downs or you allow investors money just go and expect that well, it is not your fault. It is your fault when you take the responsibility of collecting money from people. And it's your fault if you do not manage it very well. And it's your fault if, at the end of the day, your com business crumbles. But you must be accountable. You must be accountable to those people that have entrusted you with their money. And that is why we need to register you know, uh, crowdfunding intermediaries and platforms. So revocation of registration. Cessation of operation action by the SEC. So we could actually revoke our license when we discover that you have given us false information. When we discover that there is a misrepresentation. When we discover that you are not saying the truth. When we discover that you are just the person you say you are, we will do what? Revoke the license. Will cause you to cease operation and we take action. So we we'll not only revoke your license, neither will you only cease the operation of your business, we will also send you to jail. So you fail to meet our requirements, fail or ceases to operate, maintain the portal for a consecutive period of six months, fail to pay fees as prescribed by the SEC, contravene provisions of the Act, set rules, code of conduct for capital market appraisals, guilty of fraud. Repeated default has been convicted of an offense involving moral uh, rectitude. So, all of this change of structure or cessation of business operation. CFI must not change its ownership structure or discontinue operations without the prior approval of the SEC. This is important because if you are going to cease operation, we are not saying you should not cease operation. No. We are only saying that as you are seizing operation, those people that have put trust in you before you decide to seize operation, have you taken care of them? Have you taken care of them? Have you taken care of their, their investment? Have you returned their money? That is important. So we must know all of that. Notifying SEC of a proposed discontinuation and, of course, a reasonable conclusion of any of the ongoing operations. Um, because sometimes, you probably want to travel out to Canada. And because you want to go, you want to leave the business, let us know. Take care of the people that are giving you money, then you are free to even go to Finland. That is your own wala. But as it is, you must do what you need to do. Where the sex suspends, cancels, or revokes registration of a CFI intermediary, or where it seeks to voluntarily cease operations, 
The SEC shall issue directives on one or more of the following ongoing issuances of the, on the portal, funds held with custodians on behalf of fundraisers, repayment to its investors, interim management of the operations of the intermediary, and such other matter as the SEC considers necessary in the interest of investors. Note, our interest is about investors, investors and investors. So there are general obligations of the CFR display prominently. These are things that you can find, which I can jump, run over. So display prominently on its portal, information about the portal, including the ownership or the fundraiser, management and overall control structure, investor education, market and risk disclosure. So you just go to say, okay, I can give you 20%. You have not explained to the fundraiser, to the investor, the risk involved, the possibility of an upside, because you do not know. You must be able to tell them, carry out investor education, let them understand exactly what you are doing. Ensure disclosure documents, lodge the portal by the uh, fundraiser, verified for accuracy, and made accessible to investors. Don't just go out and just say things that you know are not correct, just to deceive people because you want them to bring their money. It will be false. Inform investors of any material or adverse change to the fundraiser's proposal. Ensure fundraisers comply with the responsibilities and obligations prescribed by the rules. Due diligence of fundraisers intending to use this portal. So you don't just allow anybody from a, from a dual leg to come and raise for No, you must know who they are. You must be able to vouch for them. You must be able to say one or two things about them. You must be able to conduct specific due diligence and get them to understand that, well, they are going to use this money for the purpose for which they want to use this money. And there must be a way to track that. Monitoring and reporting. This is important and crucial. Like I said, the major challenge for most institutions is that they don't have structure. So if you have structure and you are accountable, then you will do all of this. Monitor and conduct of fundraisers on this portal and take action against any misconduct. Ensure fundraising limits imposed on the uh, fundraisers are not breached. Comply with all reporting obligations as will be specified by this rule. In addition, to quarterly and annual CMO returns, which you must provide to the SEC. That we know exactly what you are doing, where you are. You don't jump from one place to the other. Of course, in the days of internet, we should be talking about data protection, privacy, establish safeguards to ensure integrity of information received and published. Ensure security, confidentiality of information collected from investors. Ensure security of portal is incorporated into development, hosting of websites in a manner which enables the public identity, the, the public identifier is safety before creating an account on the portal. All of these are very important. Data protection is key. It is very, very key. And we are all taking it seriously, in fact, in line with the national data policy uh, guidelines. So, must appoint the register set custodian shall establish, we shall establish, maintain a separate trust account for each funding round on each portal. So this is crucial. You don't just collect money and bring the money and put it in your own bank account or put it in your mother's account. No, it is not your money. It should go to the custodian. Who keeps this money in line with your disclosure for investment? Ensure funds will be maintained by the custodian in an interest yielding trust account. The total funds raised and the accruing interest will only be released to the fundraiser after specified conditions in these rules are met. Ensure the custodian shall take all responsible reasonable steps and establish measures to ensure that it performs, it performs responsibilities required of it. So this is very, very crucial and important because one of the things that allow people to become greedy is when they see too much money that they've never seen in their life and they can't control their greed. So you just say, okay, let me take a little. From a little, you take a medium. From a medium, you take the large. And you start going to for holidays in Honolulu when 
you have not been able to go for holidays in Akure before. So these are issues, and that is why we must control it. Issue publication and acknowledgement of warning statement. These are, you know, investing or warning statements should warn and advise investors about the issues about investments. Some people don't bring the money, I think that is it. It's also, there are risks. Everybody must know the risk, even the person that is investing. Even the food you are eating has risk. Because if you eat the food and put it and the food gets into the, you know, the throat, the windpipe, you are in bad shape. So be careful. And everybody must know. You can't be eating bone and thinking that, oh, you may not you know, face risk. So that's why you have to put that in. On your Sorry, Mr. Gama, because of our time, you know, because I'm still going to the panel session, so we can clearly wrap up uh, this uh, part of the discussion, so we can move straight to the panel session. And you've said a lot, which also going to explain also in the panel session, sir, if you don't mind. No so what I will do is just go straight to uh, where the commodity investment platform is, so that I can wrap that up. So, well, um, uh, let me see. Basically, it's so much to take in just a short while, but as has been said, uh, let me just go to these. And uh, so, when we received an application, of course, it is treated normally, and uh, the offering, as you know, uh, will disclose all of the information. So basically, this speaks to disclosure, disclosure of the basic information that you require to be there. And an important point to raise is actually the locking period. Investors cannot transfer their investment for a period of one year after allotment, except if the transfer is to the fundraiser of the investment or to QII or NHR. And of course, uh, you have, um, let me see if there's something. So, general disclosure requirements. The offering document must disclose the warnings. I have said that before. And it must be on the front page where everybody can see it, where it is not written. It must also disclose the risk and ongoing disclosure requirements requiring the uh, fundraiser, the porter, and the market intermediary to actually guide that process. All ongoing disclosure documents must be provided to investors through the porter, the website of the fundraiser, and such other reasonable means as may be determined by the SEC from time to time. So uh, I think I will end there. The document is provided. I wish we had more time. And uh, I believe that uh, with the little I have spoken about, I've been able to provide what I call an appetizer. You know, yeah. fortunately, this document was about 72 pages. I decided to reduce it. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Fatton had refused to give me enough time to, to complete the presentation. But it's all good. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Gama, before you before you go, please do not go because we're actually getting conversations on the chat that says you should please continue that this is important. So whatever yeah. questions that are going to come after this will come. But I yeah. think we can give you another 20 minutes for you to be able to speak about the other part because this is really important. This is set. This is why they're here. You know, so we're getting quite a few um, feedback on the chat that says, please have him continue. We'll, answer, we'll ask our questions later. So, um, Akin, please just let Mr. Um, Agama continue this conversation because it is really important and our audience needs to hear it. So, Mr. Agama, no problem. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, so Akin, sorry, you have lost this game. Try another time. It's okay. So we're talking about, yeah, so this is, I guess, where we were. So the issue, you know, you must issue this statement. It must be clear. Let everybody see. It's not something that you hide. You cannot be asking somebody to give you money 
and you have a secret with the person. It doesn't work that way. There must be an understanding, right? Investment in businesses on the portal is very speculative and carries high risk. Tell them. Tell them. You are planting maize and you do not know how the weather will look like. Already, you are already showing, telling people in, uh, about uh, uh, the return on investment. When you have not seen it, you just planted the seed. Did you tell the investor that there may, this, this challenge may exist? Or did you tell the investor that, look, oh, the place I am planting this maize is the road where farm headers, cattle headers are passing. So it's possible that they can come and eat it. And I have not done enough work to guide it. What did you tell them? Investors may lose entire investment in the ordinary course of business, in investment principles, especially for retail investors. It is always said, don't invest the money that you know you cannot lose. That is the principle. Number one, if you are a HNI or you are a QII, you can invest whatever you want to invest. But when you are a retail investor, that can hardly eat. You go and borrow money, collect your pension money, and come and give all of the money to corporate farmers. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, and you are not told what to do. No, it shouldn't be so. Past results are not indicative of future performance. Important to ask questions. Read carefully all the information and seek independent financial advice before committing yourself. Don't just listen to one man with very sweet mouth coming to talk to you and speaking to you go, and you not give the person your money. No, ask somebody else. Investment limits of investors are always monitored. The CFIs must ensure investor affirms to the risk acknowledgement form and confirms that I understand what you have told me and I have read it. It is not tomorrow you come and shout that, oh, where is this sec? When this thing was happening, did you read the disclosures? Did you follow it? All of these are important. So there must be an informed decision when this is done. Understanding the proposed investment is a risky investment. It may be overpaying for securities or investment contract issue. There may be additional classes of shares with rights superior to class being issued through the CF are able to economically absorb complete loss Fundamental, able of investment. Proposed investment amount falls within prescribed investment limits, will be subject to a lock in period for at least one year and a further restriction on transfer of the security. All of these are conditions that you must educate whoever is coming to invest. The fundraiser must obtain from investor a signed risk acknowledgement confirming its compliance with its total annual investment limit, read the statement about the uh, crowdfunding as provided in the rules, and understand investment-based CF is risky, like we have said earlier on. It may be provided with less disclosure than public companies provide. It may lose entire investment. Because as a public company, you have a strong obligation. But for a crowdfunding intermediary or platform, you know that you do not have the capacity to provide all of the information as will be required of a public company. So, compliance. What must you do? Must implement written policies and procedures on the operations of its portal to achieve compliance with AISA and CERCLU. Permit examination, inspection of its business operations its activities, premises, systems, portal, and records by representative. So we, once you have been registered, it means that we can come and visit you anytime. So know it. But the beauty about our visit is that we don't drink tea when we come to your office. We just come and check what you are doing. So don't be afraid that you will entertain us. Record keeping. You must keep your records. All investors, who registers on the portal, purchases or attempts to purchase securities or does investment, we must, we must have the records. 
all communications that occur on or through its portal, that record must be there. All persons that use communication channels of the CFR to promote the uh, fundraisers, securities, investment, or communicate with potential investors, we must have those records. All of these records are important. Because tomorrow, when something happens, there must be something or somewhere we can go to and have information. So that you don't just run away and go to, you know, Malta after collecting people's money. Record keeping, like I said, must keep, preserve all documents related to the portal during the operation of this portal or any successor portal or organizational document. Two, must be produced, records must be produced, maintained in a non alterable format, which ensures integrity of the content. Three, records must be prepared, maintained by a third party for a CIF, provided this does not relieve a CIF from responsibility to prepare, maintain records, must file undertaking that records are property of CIF, CFI, and will be surrendered upon request. These are critical things. And the problem with, you know, crowdfunding portals and crowdfunding is that a lot of times people do not consider this as important. The little, little things that you think are not important are indeed the most important. So for compliance, it's very serious. And it is only when you know that you are accountable, that is when you will be accountable. If you know you are not accountable and believe you are not accountable, then you will not be accountable. The reason why children grow properly under their parents is because they know that somebody is there to whip them to order when they go wrong. The SEC is there to whip anybody to order once you are a capital market operator when you go wrong. Use of manipulative and deceptive or other contrivances. People just write a lot of funny things all over the place, knowing fully well that they are lying. Knowing fully well that people are gullible, knowing fully well that people are naturally greedy, they want to play on their psychology and collect money from them. And before you know it, you know, they vanish into thin air. This will not be acceptable. CFIs, its associated persons, are prohibited from affecting any transactions in or inducing the purchase or sale of any security investment instrument by means of or by aiding or abating any manipulative, deceptive, or other fraudulent, you know, device or contrivance. You will make money when you make money, but make sure you do not make money on people's blood. Restriction on cross ownership must not allow a fundraiser to raise funds on its portal if it or any of its officers, directors, significant shareholders or associated persons beneficially own or control more than 5% of the securities of that effort. Where they own or control more than 5% of the securities of fundraiser seeking to raise funds through its portal, their prior approval, the prior approval of the SEC must be sought before fundraiser is granted access to its portal. So you don't just go and organize something for yourself and you, know, you, you collect the money for yourself while also manipulating the conditions at which you call it that money. You must offer investments on a portal operated by a registered CFR, standardized offering documents to be filled with the SFI. CFI must provide all of those information we spoke about. We read them, everything that has to be there must be there to show that it is legal. The fundraiser must maintain accurate lists and details of all investors, post issuance which must include full names, addresses, email, and the number of units and monetary value of investment, and which must specify investors from countries other than Nigeria. Must make other offer documents available to investors through the portal before the investor enters into agreement to purchase investment instruments. These are critical issues that needs to be taken care of must provide an investor with the contractual right to withdraw from an offer or agreement to purchase the securities or investment by delivering a notice to the portal up to 48 hours before close of the offer. 
His offering document must not be posted on his website or any other media apart from those of the portal. However, that the FR, that is the fundraiser, may post a notice on his website regarding the offering which directs users to visitors on the crowdfunding portal. A copy of the offering materials must be delivered to the SEC by the CFI at the time they are posted on this portal for disclosure purposes. Disclosure must be provided about any entity or person other than the fundraiser promoting the offering. And you see this one as in bold because that is the meat of the matter. Must not guarantee return on investment, either expressly or by any implied terms in the offering document or advertisement material. This is where a lot of us are culpable. And you will say, why should this be? We are also protecting you. We are also protecting you. Can you guarantee anything? Who are you to guarantee anything? So it's important that you know that and you adhere to it. Receipt of an application by the CFR, upon receipt of the application from an eligible fundraiser, a CFI shall, prior to approving the hosting of the offer on its portal, provide information to SEC, specifying promoters, directors, shareholders, highlighting holders of 5% and above, directly or indirectly, of the fundraiser's shares, area of business, and such other information as the crowdfunding portal deems relevant or as may be required by the SEC. Within two days of, of the information from CFI, the SEC may require CFI to provide additional information or prohibit an offering. Before directing the CFI to a prohibit an offering, the SEC shall state the reasons, direct the CFI to give the FR an opportunity to be heard, make a decision and communicate the decision as the case may be, recommending the appropriate measures that the eligible FR may take in order to comply. So it is not just to just say you can't do it. We must provide reasons. And if there are issues that can be addressed, then they should be addressed. Crowdfunding offer offering approved by the CFI will be open for not more than 60 days. May be extended for a further period of not more than 30 days on such conditions as will be specified by the portal. The CFI must adopt an IT system which limits the acceptable amount to the target amount and reject additional subscriptions once the amount, target amount is reached. So you apply IT, information technology, in dealing with some of these nuances of our regulation. Because the offering materials must be, you know, fully uh, prepared. Any material adverse change to fundraising offering during offering, investors must be notified. So if there is an issue that will not cause you to continue or will even change your projections, tell the people that are going to bring money. For an offer to be successful, minimum threshold, target amount in offering documents that complete the business objectives of the fundraiser must have been established or subscribed to. Because you can't say I want to raise 50 Naira and for me to succeed in that project, I need 45 Naira minimum. And you now raise 20 Naira and you want to go ahead. No, because the simple tendency is this. If you want to do something with 45 Naira, you only raise 20 Naira. The tendency is that you are going to eat that 20 Naira. You are not going to use it for anything. And that will be terrible for the investors who are trusted you to even bring that money. So if you cannot meet your target, return the money. It means nobody's interested in the business. Try another one. Right? You decide to sell, you know, pack, ogi, and nobody's buying. Go and try custard. They are closed. One has color and one is white. If amount to raise meets minimum amount, but fails falls short of um, target amount, CFI must direct custodian to make funds available to FR upon the provision of a revised plan. So that is important. Use of funds to investors and CFI within one week and end of the offer. Provided 
the underlying project is proposed, used into the, the underlying project to be proposed for the proposed use of the funds can be downscaled and executed independently without negatively impacting the operators, operations of the fund raiser. If minimum threshold is not met at end of offer, CFI must make a refund to all investors in 48 hours. All of these are rights that we have instituted or included in this in order for us to have a wonderful time or a good environment in operating this particular route. Investors have the right to withdraw any agreement put or to purchase investments up to 48 hours before, you know, the closing that we have said that before. Ability to cancel money is permissible by an automated system on portal or by not using of technology again. If target is not met before the 90 days from opening of the offer and a withdrawal occurs, reducing the amount, CFI must permit reopening of the amount of the, of the offer for the balance sum for not more than the unexpected, unexpected period of 90 days, unexpected period of 90 days. Locking period. Investors cannot transfer their investment for a period of one year after allotment, except if a transfer is to the fundraiser of the investment or to the HNIs or QRIs or part of an offer for sale registered with the SEC. To retail investors registered on the portal or to a family member of the investor, uh, these are the conditions for which locking can happen. Tag along rights, admission of an equity offering to a portal is subject to the existence confirmation of a tag along rights for retail investors and promoters. Fundraisers format must provide for right of retail investors and promoters to withdraw from the company or to sell the stake if controlling shareholders transfer of company to third parties in three years from conclusion of the offer. Admission of a debt offering to a portal subject to the existence of an early redemption, a put option for all investors. The offering document and any other agreement governing the investment must provide for right of investors to request for an early redemption of investment. If the controlling shareholders transfer control of the company's third parties rights within three years from the conclusion. Information to be submitted to the CFR. For the fundraiser, he has to submit relevant financial information and of course information that explains key characteristics of the company, expertise of his management. So for a crowdfunding portal, don't just accept anybody. Look at the person you are going to accept. If somebody says he's a farmer, check properly if he's a farmer or he can actually farm or he's just an adjebota that wants to come and collect your money. You must be clear, very, very clear about the ability of whoever wants to do whatever they want to do on your platform. The offering document must disclose all of those informations we are talking about concerning the management, concerning the history, concerning the board, concerning the people involved, concerning everything, your related companies must also be disclosed so that the investor will have clear information. Disclose your risk. Tell people exactly how it is. Don't deceive them, you know? And of course, there are ongoing disclosures that are required even as a crowdfunding portal. Access to offering and ongoing disclosure documents, this must be accessible by every investor. Ongoing disclosure documents must be provided to investors through the portal, the website of the fundraiser, and such other reasonable means as we time by sec from time to time. A CFR is not prohibited from advertising the existence of his portal, provided that such advertisement is restricted to general information about the portal and the business business model, and does not include any information on specific offer. Crowdfunding intermediaries to ensure that all marketing communications to investors by efforts are clearly identifiable as such. The CFI must approve all marketing materials and ensure that marketing materials by fundraisers comply with the general rules of SEC advertisement on advertisement. So the SEC has rules on advertisement and for whichever advert you are gonna put up, you need to get clearance for that to happen. The CFI or managers and offer officers of their portals are prohibited from providing any financial assistance to investors 
for purpose of investing. That will be inside that deal posted on this portal, right? Soliciting investment or making recommendations and intermediate or facilitate secondary trade between buyers and sellers. And of course, utilizing any website, social media, whatever, you know, other than the registered website of the portal for the purpose of facilitating crowdfunding offering. The fundraisers shall not also directly or indirectly pay a commission, finder's fee, referral fees, all of those gimmicks to bring people to the see to the portal should can should not be encouraged and will not be acceptable. Offer non-permissible investment instrument, post order concurrently on multiple crowdform portals, lend or finance or, or arrange lending or financing on an investor to purchase investment through the back door. Non-permitted fundraisers. The following are prohibited from raising funds to the portal. Complex structures. When you now bring something that people cannot understand, just because you want to, you know, slap them, you know, of a bound, that's what your wife will say. You know, <laughs> you just come and move people. Yeah, say because you are so sophisticated. You can't bring that to a cultural from the brand. PLCs, because yes, and they are subsidiaries. Companies with no specific business plan or a blind pool. Companies that propose to use the funds raised to provide loans or invest in other entities, such other entities as may be specified by the SEC. These are not allowed. They are not permitted. Eligibility. CFI may operate a commodity investment platform subject to the compliance with the following additional requirements. The requirements we have just spoken about are the basics. There are additionals for CFI. So for crowdfunding, uh, commodities investment platform. Commodities CFI shall not be registered as a fund manager with SEC. CFI must not facilitate on its portal any other CF business, crowdfunding business, other than sourcing funds for investment in agriculture or other commodities. The portal operated by the CFI for investment in agricultural commodities projects must not be used for any other funding or marketing purposes. The CFI registered to operate a CIT must not host a different CF as crowdfunding portal where funds will be sourced for non-agricultural or commodity projects. So for the CITs, which is the commodities investment platform, theirs is peculiar. And of course, what is expected of them is a bit different. And there are additions to the basic foundation of the crowdfunding rules. The cash asset ratio Requirement for CFI for a CFI operating a CIP must be a minimum of 60% limited liquid assets and 40% fixed and other assets. So that is the ratio that is required for that. Then, of course, a very popular one is the housing projects, which are already also in town. You see a lot of housing projects trying to raise money from the crowd. CFI can host projects on its CIP subject to compliance with the following, following. Ensure that proper due diligence is carried out on all projects and project execution, executors or beneficiaries. Provide investors with information which must be displayed prominently to investors prior to making an investment target plan. Location of proposed project all of the things that needs to be, you know, done. And of course, you have additional obligations, which are all here, adequate records of project owners, all of those small things that requires you to give further disclosure as to the project you are actually engaging in. So we are free to come for inspections. That is uh, not uh, in context. And of course, you have limits. So for that, the maximum amount which can be raised for a commodities investment platform within one 12 month period, which must not exceed 1 billion naira, provided that the SEC on application and proper verification grants approval to exceed the specific amount that is so stated here. So this is clear. Miscellaneous, of course, any organization association may approach the commission for the purpose of supervising registered crowdfunding intermediaries. The penalty, any crowdfunding intermediary that fails to comply with these rules shall be liable to a fine of not less than 
100,000 naira and the sum of 5,000 naira for every day the violation continued and shall in addition be liable for any loss of investor funds arising due to such action. Transition, that is every person, entity, operating a crowdfunding portal, digital commodity investment platform, prior to the commencement of this rule, shall restructure its operations in compliance with these rules and apply for registration not later than 90 days from the effective date of issue. That 90 days are since passed, and yet we are seeing some people not yet coming. But let me tell you, this announcement is for everybody, including Akin Aladi, and we hope that everyone will comply. Thank you so very much for the opportunity, and God bless you. Wow, quite amazing, amazing discussion, fully loaded. Thank you, Mr. Gama. I really appreciate the fact that we're able to elaborate, you know, extensively, you know, about the uh, crowdfunding business, agri-tech, you know, the benefits of farmers. It's quite insightful. You know, for, for, I, I must confess to you, I've been here taking accurate notes, you know, but at the same time, I had to work with the schedule that, you know, I've been uh, given with, you know, to also follow through the uh, schedule the time guide. But at the same time, fantastic discussion. And I'm sure that those who listen to you have been able to get, you know, accurate information and next steps and how to get themselves protected, you know, now that SEC has fully regulated uh, the crowdfunding um, business. Thank you very much again, Mr. Agama. I really appreciate all that for you. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're moving straight down now to the panel discussion. Uh, well, the panel discussion is going to be quite um, also elaborate. So, we're going to drill down into basic things that Mr. Agama said. You know, he has said a lot of things, but it's that time for other panelists to also put their uh, briefing, you know, to the table. You know, and uh, we have wonderful, wonderful uh, media, uh, sorry, panel panel uh, guests or discuss discussants here this morning to join us, you know, in this powerful topic that helps talk about uh, understanding the new set regulation on crowdfunding, you know, on various agri-tech platforms. So to welcome on board uh, for the uh, panel uh, discussion, I'm going to have uh, number one, Mr. Gamma is also going to join us so you can turn back your video. Mr. Gama is going to also join us for the panel discussion. And also we have um, Mr. Fatono, you know, uh, he gave the welcome address from Leadway. He is the head agri and micro insurance of Leadway Assurance. Also we have uh, Ms. Adebayi from Leadway also. From Leadway, she's also going to be joining us for the discussion. And also finally, we have uh, Mrs. Senami from Grovest. Uh, she also will be joining us for the discussion on this panel discussion. Uh, so please, uh, technical crew, kindly confirm if every of the panel uh, guests are available on the platform so we could just commence as fast as possible. Thank you very much. All right, I think everybody's here now. I can see uh, Mrs. Senami also. Uh, can, see can, you, can she turn on her video so we can also see her? You know, so that we can be sure that also she's available on the panel discussion. Okay, so we'll be jumping straight down into the discussion now. Uh, so I'll be starting first. Mr. Gamma, you know, you've said a lot. You've you've drilled down the discussion. You've 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 scattered it, you know, you've scattered everything to the table, you know, and um we just now put it together so that everybody will understand what and what it takes them to really be part of the old crowdfunding business. So the first question I'm gonna ask you is um which crowdfunding platforms? Are affected by this regulation, basically. Which crowdfunding platforms is actually affected by this uh, regulation, sir? Yes. If you if you listen very well from the beginning, that's why I laid that foundation. The SEC has rules and has power over the regulation of investment and securities business. Simple. Do you promise? people that bring money and you are going to get money. Hmm. Once you promise people to say, bring money and you are going to get money, then you are inside our trap. You get it. If you say, bring money, we want to use this money to provide school for people to enjoy good education. You are not for us. Hmm. You are free to do that. If you want to provide 
sports equipment for people. You are not. If you are doing you know, crowdfunding to provide money to treat somebody who is sick, it's not our business. But if you are doing crowdfunding to collect money and you are going to give those people money, there's going to be a return, brother. Welcome to our club. Okay, so welcome on board, guys. <laughs> Mr. Gamma said. So, uh, Mr. Fasano, this question is going to go to you. Um, I've known you for years as a major player in the in both, you know, as a farmer, number one, and also as an insurance professional, and also somebody that's worked, you know, practically with local farmers. Now, I'm going to ask this question now. Based on your experience, um, is Leadway, you know, going to review its partnership with various agri platforms? Mr. Fasano, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Shaki. First and foremost, I want to appreciate Mr. Agama for that particular brilliant and intelligent uh, presentation. He has gone ahead to break down the crowdfunding rules into big services for our Sunday to understand, and that is actually very clear. So we equally know where we stand as it has to do with regulation concerning crowdfunding activities and every other stakeholder that is participating in that particular space being guided by them. Now, definitely, that will actually give me uh, uh, impetus to go ahead and uh, answer uh, Mr. Nabi's question. Of course, we have this particular rule are going to, have to be a kind of, uh, I want to say, a game changer and not a shoe stopper, really, for me. So, definitely, we are going to have, in line with this particular regulation, to regulate, I mean, to review our activities, to review our activities with uh, uh, architect platforms that are to come from. In fact, in the, com in, the, in the coming days, we are going to actually engage them and communicate with them concerning the fact that uh, we need to revalidate all the uh, partnership agreement that they have so that this partnership agreement will have components of uh, the requirements as stipulated by SEC as it relates to crowdfunding. So the component must actually be there so that everybody will not will be seen to be obeying the law. And as a responsible company, we only want to be rich. So, uh, one of the one of the major 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 requirements now is that for anybody who will know that is to, it, it, that is into the craft of the activity for architect platform must actually show us um, the fact show us uh, documentation that it has registered with SEC and is actually in compliance with SEC regulation. That is the first thing. We can go ahead and ask to validate the fact. The first question I'm going to ask is that have we complied with uh, with uh, the sec uh, uh, the, the new sec regulation of crowdfunding? And of course, we have actually extensively discussed this with the sec too. And on the fact that we had Mr. Uh, Agama say that everybody, including the courts, will actually be sanctioned if anybody is, is found to be in breach. So of course, we are doing that particular review and uh, of. Uh, of once uh, we have, once we are done with this particular uh, uh, enlightenment program on that, thank you, Alabi. So the we are from us in the coming days. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Mr. Fasano. Uh, good feedback there. So I want to all just to please also drop in our questions in the Q and A box. You know, at the right hand side of our, our portal. So just drop your questions so that we can ask the panel discussions. You know. Uh, whatever you want to ask them, you know, more, more detailed questions that you want to ask any of them. So please drop your questions there so we could just ask them once and for all. Now, um, the next question actually goes to Miss Adebayi. Now, Mr. Adebayi, you hold a very key position in Lidway Assurance, in Lidway, uh, Lidway uh, Assurance Company. You're actually the ED General Insurance Lidway. Now, based on um, what Lidway has been doing, what, what exactly is Lidway's reaction towards this new regulation? What, 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 is, what is your company's reaction so was this regulation that had just been, you know, spitted out and broken down by uh, Mr. Gamma's sec. So please, what, what, what's your company's reaction? As an insurance company, one of the things that we do is take on business risks for people. Um, and, and that risk is the fundamental risk of the assets or liability that is insured. Uh, so, for a crowd, a crowd funder, for example, 
uh, particularly within the agri space, uh, what they do is raise funds to use that fund for farming or farm investment. And you know any return from the farm investment is then it is is then uh, distributed. So when we underwrite, uh, essentially taking on the risk of failure of the of the farm, so to speak, or should I say failure of the produce, and sometimes maybe loss of the farm assets, we basically uh, recompense the um, the crowd funder. So ultimately the investor. Or loss of you know farm asset uh, produce or you know accidents on the farm. Now, given that this is our business, one of the ways by which we undertake such risk is we appraise the risk. So the SEC rules now form an integral part of a risk appraisal. So, and a number of the things that Mr. Agama mentioned are things that are positive in terms of risk appraisal. Um, the public tends to get confused between uh, pure economic loss and uh, uh, insurable risk. Uh, insurance does not cover pure economic loss, which means if you just lose your money, uh, because you have been guaranteed a particular return, you lose your principal, you lose your interest. That's not what the insurance is for. The insurance is for if there's a failure of harvest, so to speak, or maybe the harvest is lower than expected. So uh, your yield is not as expected, uh, or you know there's a, there's a damage to the farm assets, and as a result of that, there's probably a delay and that stuff. Those are the things we cover. Or that you lose 20 naira or you lose 1 million naira is not what insurance covers. And the SEC rules have clearly indicated that the crowd funders must publish a warning, letting people know that this is a high risk venture. They can stand to lose their principal and interest, and they may not even get the yield that they expected. For us, that's positive. It's part of the due diligence that we have to do uh, um, as, as insurers. So as Mr. Patton has mentioned also, so when we get a crowd funder come to us now, it is important that we go through the SEC checklist to understand that you know, they meet the, the requirements. And all these requirements, and I particularly like uh, what Mr. Gamma has said, it's the law. Well, the way I would spin it is that the law is not the law for the law's sake. The law is the law because it enables trust, it enhances trust, and it, it you know public trust is very important. And when you're in the business of raising money, it's really all about trust. So the rules are rules that are now enabling trust. And we welcome it. In fact, we looked forward to it before it became published. You know, we, we saw the exposure draft where we were waiting and you know, really waiting for it because this will just help to discipline the market. Now, the concern for us though is that crowdfunding is, is a tech business essentially. So we're concerned a little bit about the administration that hopefully the administration will not be manual, you know, that a lot of the uh, regulatory activities will also flow with the time uh, in terms of being an e-regulated environment. And, you know, of course, maybe there are certain things that may still happen uh, uh, offline, but at least, you know, there must also be an e-regulatory environment, you know, maybe done with some sort of AI or, or what have you that would also help the uh, platforms to integrate seamlessly so that an investor, whilst linking up to a particular agri-tech platform, should be able to get the registration status of that platform, should be able to get information on the platform's custodian, you know, should be able to get some you know, uh, um, inquiry feedback on, on, on um, the investment that is being proposed, and also should be able to get flashes in terms of the warning you know, that you know what, please note that you're putting your money in this and you stand the risk to lose everything. 
And if there's insurance, that the insurance is only for the uh, real physical losses and real accidents, not for your investment. You know, so for us, it's all positive, really. I don't think there's anything particular. I don't think there's anything negative about the set rules. I would only say that the only part of it that we would ask for is that it the regulation should be e-based. E it should be electronic as well. You know to connect Sorry. very well with uh, with how the agritech platforms work thank you yeah thank you very much um uh, miss adibai quite uh detailed there thank you very much so she's saying that they need to um uh, at some level of digitalization technology e, uh, you know, electronical process into the old uh crowdfunding solution now uh to okay, let, let me respond to mrs adibai before you go on because all right please sir me uh, just to let her know, apparently uh, she is also not e, e yet. Because if she's E yet, she will know that uh, indeed what we have done with the crowdfunding applications is E, completely E. So you apply E. Uh, we we have delayed a little bit uh, because we are doing some back end issues in order for it to be smooth, you know, and uh, stainless. So that's what we are doing. And that we believe strongly that we are in the e-era. The SEC is moving through a very strong IT transformation process. And uh, uh, it's uh, just uh, for us, like what it should be. Uh, there's no doubt about the fact that for us to be able to regulate that space, for us to be able to live to the expectation of that space, we must be in the cloud. And we are already there with them. So you are welcome to our Ines. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Like, oh, I'm happy that you have eat, and we look forward to more AI solutions as well. Thank you. <laughs> I just love the way he responds to feedbacks, you know, with some level of uh, jokes, you know, and all that. Thank you very much, Mr. Gama, once again. So the next one actually goes to Mrs. Senami. Uh, Mrs. Senami is, uh, she, she actually is, um, Senami Amisu, she's the financial service consultant at Brovest. Now, Mrs. Senami, You've been the, in the architect space for a while now, and you know how these things actually run, you know, and majorly it's all about the architect, the crowdfunding and the people. So the question I'm going to ask you is quite uh, explicit. So how have architect platforms reacted to this new regulation by SEC? So thank you. Thank you, Akin. Um, so first of all, um, I'd like to thank Mr. Agama. Um, he's been at the forefront of these rules. He's been very approachable to a lot, a lot of the agritech platforms. He has been very um, open to innovation and to feedback. So I'd like to thank Mr. Gamma and SEC on that on that regard. Um, with regards to the um, the first initial feedback from um, agritech platforms, um, first of all, know that they're, they're, we always I'll dimension into two. They are the real people that are doing the real business, and there's the shaft that Mr. Agama has said that we want to weed out. So first of all, we all welcome these rules. Well, first of all, welcome the rule because it will differentiate the people that are here for the real business and the people that are just here that have an idea and just want to milk the market for what is what. Um, I would say, first of all, we have some teething issues from people that have consulted with because structure is new, especially structure from regulators is new. Um, so getting to this point of where they have to organize themselves is something that they are working towards. Um, they are restructuring their businesses. And so I would say it's a work in progress. Uh, I, the initial timeline for getting ready to um, up, to for getting ready to adhere to these regulations, we think is a little short because we've never done this before. But we, we're working towards that. Um, but we'll work with uh, we work with the SEC, and as Mr. Instagrama said, we all want to be within the coffee of the law. We all want to be able to grow this market because we see this market growing to be bigger than even the IPO market eventually. Does that answer you, Mr. King? Yes, you have actually answered. You're giving me a piece of feedback of what our uh, tech platform uh, feel about the new regulation by. So the question actually um, also back to Mr. Gamma. Uh, now you've explained a lot. This is quite all right. Basically, for me, I'll just say let's just go on. But um, now this question is: Are there any categories of tech platforms exempted? from this regulation and is there any okay so uh mr Akin. okay your question is very interesting 
why would anybody be exempted from regulation if you are not exempted from collecting money? So, importantly, what we are saying is that once there is somebody involved from whom you have decided to collect money, then you will see me because I have a responsibility to protect that person whom you are, you may not be protected. So clearly, the point is, I said, if it is donation based, you want to do the burial ceremony of your great grandmother and uh, do crowdfunding for that. I don't have any business, you won't see me. I can come and wear, you know, the ghillie and all of that as your, as your beat to come and dance with you. But if you are going to collect money from people, promising them that you are going to give them money in return above their principal. Sorry, there's no exemption. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's just a simple explanation. You know, so far you're going to collect money to return money, there is no exemption for you. So my next question goes to Mr. Fatano. Uh, Mr. Gama said a lot. So, so this question is this. Considering the case of defaulting agri-tech platforms, how will this new regulation help Edu Assurance to curtail such uh, incidences? I think uh, if you take a look at the laws that have been spun out by SEC on this, you can see that a lot of due diligence will need to be done before you can become registered as to even crowdfund to engage in the, this. That aspect actually will go a long way, lessen the risks of exposure. I had to do with proper management of that particular uh, uh, fund that the public has actually trusted you with. Actually, what because again, it's not going to be very easy for you to get that particular uh, SEC uh, registration or clearance of SEC if those compliance have not been met. So, with those steps, I think to 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 us, I think the insurance company, it simply means this aspect of constant effort in scenarios where some of these uh, uh, crowdfunders do not even have the skill and competence. They would invest in those particular because what we find out that that is one of the major reasons. Some of them do not have that particular skill and competence. Is even running an agri farm, but because of that, seems not to be any form of regulation. They just pop in there, copy and paste what some of the good ones are doing and not doing that properly. And at the end of the day, there is actually failure in that particular investment. So we have, we know we have the opinion or we are we are sure that the due diligence that will actually be conducted. On the part of uh, on the part of SEC before the grant registration to any of these crowdfunding platform, we actually run positively on the way uh, on the way crowdfunding is done, especially as it's related to agri-tech platform. And at the end of the, I think it's actually going to be uh, uh, it's, it's going to be it's going to be advantageous to all our sundry, to all the stakeholders participating in this particular uh, 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 business of crowdfunding in the country. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Fasano. Thank you very, very much. Um, and now, my next question actually goes to Ms. Adebayi. Uh, you've explained initially, you know, about Leadway. So, this next one goes to you. Now, is SEC approval going to become a condition for underwriting agric insurance for crowdfunding platform? Let me come again. Now, is SEC approval going to be a condition for underwriting agric insurance? For crowdfunding platform, Miss Adebayi, over to you, please. Can you hear me, ma'am? Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot I muted myself. Um, uh, oh, okay. Again, the, the straightforward answer is yes, and you have heard, Mr. Gamma, that even an insurance company can flout the law and it, it emphasize that this is the law. So it's not a guideline, it's the law. So that means we have to take that into consideration. If we cannot underwrite any unapproved uh, entity, that is essentially uh, the position now. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Mark. Quite uh, explicit and detailed there. Thank you very much. So my next question also goes to um, Brovest, Mr. Senami. Now, the question I have for you here is, um, do the Agritech platforms consider the crowdfunding limits of 100 million 
and 1 billion adequate. Let me come again. Now, do the agritech platforms consider the crowdfunding limits of 100 million and 1 billion adequate? Thank you, Akin, for that question. Uh, let me start from the agritech part. That's the commodities, the commodities investment platform. Um, so there's a limit of 1 billion in for 12 months that that was prescribed in the law, in the regulations. Is it adequate? No. But again, uh, as Mr. Gamma said, we are building a structure. We are building market development. So we would start with this. We will use this to test the market. And um, from even from my interactions with SEC, I'm sure by the time we have built a case around this and we see that it's something that needs to be um, maybe expanded on, uh, we would reach out to the SEC and see what ways that we can Maybe maybe put some other measures in place. Maybe more monitoring, or um, or maybe more more emphasis on maybe um, due diligence around that. So in, in a straightforward answer, it's one billion. I'm going to start from the one billion. One billion, yes, for now, while we test the market. The other angle, the hundred million for MSMEs, I would say is rather low um, from our perspective. But again, um, we are testing the market and. To the, to the extent that we've ticked all the boxes, uh, if you're a retail investor, if you're an HNI, if you're a qualified investor, um, we believe that the 100 million should be should be allowed to go up to uh, at least 500 million initially. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, there, Mr. Senami from GoVest. So uh, please don't talk. Our listeners and participants so that we can ask them uh, the five questions that you want to know all about. So um, my third question, you know, um, this this is the third question I'll be asking Mr. Gamma now. Mr. Gamma, this question is for you. Hope you're still here with me, sir. Um, okay, so is there a provision for those who are playing below 100 million requirements by SEC? I repeat. Is there a provision for those who are playing below 1 million, 100 million uh, minimum requirements by SEC? Mr. Gawa, please. Right. So, uh, nothing is cast in stone, right? There's a regulation, there's a rule. The SEC has a discretion. If you tell me you want to raise below 100 million naira, uh, and you show me good reason why the SEC should give approval, we will do. So the point is, don't just come because you woke up in the night and you're, you know, you got a, a vision from your pastor. Then you now come to raise money from people to say you want to do a great business when you really don't know what you are going to go into. You must show some degree of seriousness, some, you know, some element of uh, expertise that you have, you have indeed reviewed what you want to do and you know exactly what you want to do and you can deliver on what you want to do. Because it could be below 100 million, it could be below 5,000. That may just be the last bread of a human being in his life. So why would I want to be want you to be entrusted with such money without plans? So for the SEC, it's about protection, protection of the investor, and indeed the person. Because you, sometimes you have to be protected from yourself. It could just be your own devil. Thank you, Mr. Gamma. Thank you very much. And I'm sure that we are all listening to the feedback from Mr. Gamma, you know, based on the questions that have been asked. Uh, I think the, uh, we're going to have feedbacks now from our participants, so we're going to ask them as the uh, discussion goes on. So uh, my third question to Mr. Fatano. Uh, Mr. Fatano, you've been in this industry for a long time, and um, if, if I've, I've been able to discuss with several agri um, insurance firms, and when I discuss with them, your name Somali is usually comes as top notch, you know, in the agri insurance sector. So this question is: What measure would Leadway put in place to prevent agri-tech platforms from circumventing this process? You mentioned uh, copy and paste or timestamp. You know, what, what measures are you going to put in place? You know, to 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 so people that may want to avert this, that want to circumvent this process. What what do you, what do you have to say about that, Mr. Mr. Patterno, sir? Uh, I think uh, is uh, the answer to that question is simply direct. We're going to be leveraging on this uh, regulation from SEC. 
And like I've actually mentioned during the course of this discussion, the first thing we'll ask is, where is your clearance or registration from SEC? That becomes the first uh, document that we demand for before we start thinking of ensuring your project. Then second thing too, and I think we'll actually be doing that, but we'll go ahead and up again. we we'll ensure that those farms or those projects do really exist. We want to go to your farm to see what kind of pigs, what kind of broiler, what kind of uh, uh, animals, what kind of crops you have actually cultivated, what kind of agricultural produce you have in storage, to be able to see that, uh, well, uh, you are not actually out there trying to scam uh, 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 or suspected or ignorant investors. So those are the two things. First and foremost, like I said, number one, we're going to leverage your this regulation very, very well. In fact, we're going to send message concerning this to all our architect partners that they need to go ahead and comply. And like I said, we're going to equally review our existing partnership agreement with them. And one of the major components that will play a major role is the fact that the clearance for, uh, from SEC will actually be a site panel before we go ahead and do business with you. Then number three, we're going to see your project, we're going to see the size of that particular project. Because again, we don't want to actually be seen to be in breach of this particular SEC regulation. I think uh, from the look of things, I think uh, it's, it's, actually, it's actually set for us uh, with, with the partnership and this particular uh, regulation from SEC. Uh, that, that, that is the answer to uh, that. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Pastor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Those, are quite, okay. those are quite processes that lead into put in place to ensure that it's done accurately. So uh, the third question to Ms. Um, Adegbayi. Uh, how will Leadway work with regulator and agri-tech platforms to ensure compli compliance? And compliance is very key. So I'm going to ask it again. How will Leadway work with regulator and agri-tech platforms to ensure compliance? Ms. Adegbayi, please. Um, uh, end of a Greek, um, uh, basically, is present when there are Request for meetings, and I think it was also um, at the at the tra draft stage it was quite involved as well. And I think that is the best way to uh, work with the regulator uh, because the regulator would uh, want to sound out the market as well and the players within the market. Beyond that, uh, we can only ensure that we we comply uh, with the um, uh, crowd funding platform, um, our responsibility as insurers is also to ensure that we support them because the insurance business is really to enable progress. So the progress of our clients, um, uh, I mean, the progress of our clients is, is really topmost of, of our own mind. Uh, so as much as possible, if they have some challenge, we need to also understand what their challenges are and be able to respond to it. Uh, but whether they are clients or whether we are insurers, we have to operate within that uh, giant boundary of the law that has, that has now found its way into regulation. So we do, we're, we're going to be there as partners in progress, uh, supporting, helping, helping to also make inquiries or clarifications as required. I think that's the best we can do for our clients uh, in, in this um, at, the, at this point in time. Thank you very much, okay, please, Ma. That is, can, that is really can, exactly. can, I, can, I, can I be clear to that? In fact, please go on, sir. There, can, there can is go actually, on, sir. okay, there, there is actually uh, uh, an activity that is actually a work in progress. Mrs. Senami can actually attest to that. Uh, the Association of Agri-Tech Platforms involved with can when the activities was formed. And uh, uh, lead with assurance company limited and the uh, Sterling Bank are actually uh, part and parcel of the members of that particular association in order to actually guide the association and uh, the group in trying to ensure that uh, there is compliance and sanity in that particular industry. I think going forward to you can actually include somebody from SEC too, because again, that particular association is like a pressure group from uh, the, 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 the agri-tech uh, platform side. So I think that's equally in addition to yeah, uh, actually form that particular relationship up on in ensuring that uh, the partnership actually works better. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very, very much. So um, my next question actually goes to Mrs. Senami before we now go into the uh, questions that we have here from uh, those who are listening and hearing us live. 
Um, Mr. Senami, now, would Abitech platforms still consider crowdfunding to fund their business or resource to alternatives? You know, let, let me repeat again. Would Abitech platforms still consider crowdfunding to fund their businesses or resort to other alternatives? Mr. Senami, please. Okay, so the straight answer will be yes, they will still resort to crowdfunding. And as Mr. Agama said, there are some of some people are actually still doing the crowdfunding, uh, hope, hoping that SEC will not come after them. But we know that we know that SEC is about to enforce the rules. Um, so yes, crowdfunding is still a viable option. It's still one of the easiest options for a agri tech platform to start to start and run its business. And as the structure, as how it how it goes, as they grow bigger. They will now start considering other options, uh, be it any, any of the other options from the capital market. And so, yes, crowdfunding is still a viable option. It's still the first option for an agri tech platform. And it's even the, I would, I would say, I would actually say it's actually the preferred option. Um, once we read out the, the other, the other non participants that we, we think are not serious. I'll, I'll, thank you. Thank you. Although I have a question for Mr. Agama. Is Mr. Agama still on? Yes, he's still on. Mr. Agama, there's a question that keeps coming back to me. The fees, you know, there's a section that says um, there'll be trans, um, transaction fees, like 5% transaction fees payable by the crowdfunding, crowdfunding intermediary to, to SEC. Do you, could you give us some background on that? Thank you. Okay, so when we talk about fees, there are specific fees in our regulation. Uh, of course, uh, the SEC is not a charity organization. It's government. It has to run. And, uh, you know, for people that do not know, the SEC is uh, funded by the market, not government. Government does not give the SEC any cover. So, uh, for that reason, there will certainly be little fees to be able to run regulation. Of course, Regulation is an expensive activity, so it's not going to be terrible on your balance sheet. So don't worry about it. So whatever you know, fear you have, I know it's certainly not going to be terrible on your balance sheet. Thank you very much. Uh, does that answer your question, Mrs. Senami? <laughs> Mr. Agava is laughing. No problem. Thank you. When we get to that point. <laughs> You cross it is important. Uh, All right, thank you very much. In terms of uh, just a follow up from myself, in terms of the percentage, five percent, five percent of um, of what is that not too high? You know, because mind you, the people who are raising a uh, uh, fund through this source is also because they're trying to avoid the cost of alternatives. And if this now becomes an expensive one again as well, I, I really don't know. So I'm just trying to find out whether that percentage is not too high. Yeah, so so we actually will look at it. Uh, by the time we start uh, receiving applications and we apply those fees and we see that it's prohibitive, we'll certainly, we're happy to bring it down. You know, certainly we do. Uh, the SEC is a listening organization. So let's start. You know, sometimes, if you don't do certain things, you won't find the serious people involved coming coming around. You just find charlatans. So you need to create barriers that will only allow serious-minded people like uh, Senami and Co to come over. She can't run away. <laughs> <laughs> thank okay. you very very much. You know, thank you very much. I I want to appreciate every member of the panel uh, session session this morning. So questions actually coming in. You know, and uh, we want us to quickly delve on that, you know, questions that are coming in from people that are listening to us live, and uh, the questions are quite uh, enormous. Uh, but the people are highly centering and knocking Mr. Agama from the question I have here. I think you are, major, are the major spotlight for this discussion. So the first question that I have here actually goes for you, sir. And, and this is from, um, uh, he didn't mention his name, though. He said, um, the trend of crowdfunding for agri has actually changed since SEC decided to start regulation. Most of the agri-tech now does agri real estate, selling farmlands to potential buyers. Please, what is SEC doing about that? 
Right. So thank you. Like I said, once it's an investment, it's an investment. So if an agri tech decides to become a real estate agent selling land, well, that's a different story entirely, right? So if you are selling farmland, you are selling a property. If you are selling a property, what is mm. my business as a? No, it is a, a real estate business. You are selling land, not that you are going to invest in the land and give returns on the land. No, 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 no. Remember what I said. There must be returns involved. There must be returns involved. So you sell land, you sell land. Yes. It's like you telling me that because, you know, I'm sick. If you are buying a house, I should come and be part of it. No, uh, I have my limit. And I manage my limit. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Gamma. Another question again that goes for you. The person they mentioned his name again. He said, um, a lot of agri business have hidden behind SEC policies to discontinue operations and have failed to refund investors' fund. What is SEC role in ensuring that these agri business return money back to investors? These are those that have been beaten. You know, they've got their hands beaten. They're the one asking these questions now. What, what, what is SEC role in that regard? Okay. Yeah, so you see why regulation is important. It shows that clearly from the beginning, these guys are fraudulent. So, because if they are not fraudulent, why will SEC rules and regulations make you not to pay your investors? So, that is what we are trying to avoid. That's why the SEC is, the SEC is so passionate about having these rules out and being actually you know, operative. So the uh, complainant should write to the SEC, letting us know who these people are. And uh, they will visit the law, and the law will visit them, and we'll know who is stronger. Okay, thank you very much once again, thank you. So this question again is from Samson Ogole. So I think I'll be directing the question to Mr. Fatono. Uh, now, Samson Ogole says, can, can all of these processes be done online? What about crowdfunding for produce, e.g. aggregators sometimes pay to get produce? Let me repeat the question again, just to be clear. Now, we said, can all these processes be done online? What about crowdfunding for produce, e.g. aggregators sometimes pay to get produce? Mr. Fasono, please. Sorry, I, I, I think that particular question concerning the online aspect of it is actually yes. for sec. But as Mr. Gamma has reiterated, he said everything is can be done electronically. So it simply means that if they apply to sec online, retype, they, they are still going to go through that particular process. Then again, we have uh, various kind of uh, insurance products to cover that particular line of business. That are with agricultures that are involved in the uh, produce storage. You know, that is another aspect where people go ahead and can from the can from the from from the public and purchase produce and store them in the warehouse. And now said maybe when uh, there's a little bit of scarcity in the market, on the basis of that, they make some returns on it. So if you are confronted for that and you have gone ahead to comply with certain regulations, there are uh, insurance products that they will be willing to provide for you to go ahead and ensure that particular agricultural produce that is in storage. We are not going to guarantee your investment or return, like uh, Ms. Adebayi had mentioned. We are going to ensure the real asset, which is the agricultural produce that is in storage. So if anything happens to it, maybe there is fire, there is flood, there is a break-in, and people are got it in away. Insurance policy you have will go ahead and, and compensate you for the loss that is suffered. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Fasano. Again, uh, there's another question for you, Mr. Fasano, from Fola. Now, Fola said, I have bought into HQ Con because they advertised in the newspaper and published Leadway Insurance as their partner. Now, they have gone under without repayment, as at when due. They are communicating before, but they have stopped. Please, what can I do? I want to, I don't want to. So this is a person that has the exam or have Yes, yeah, don't worry. I, I know about it, you call. I try to cure the you call when they said you are going to guarantee 60% return on investment. And I'm so sure it is not liquid. I know the insurance company that was presented as a you call. 
We never had any business transaction with EQCon. That I can say authoritatively. EQCon had another insurance company. I don't want to mention the name of the insurance company on that. Uh, but, but the other, but definitely not legal. Definitely no. For, uh, mm, thank you very much. You go ahead and put EQCon to say. Because that's bad. EQCon said they're going to guarantee, they are going to guarantee 60% return. On the commodity that takes just about a uh, maximum six months to gestate that and sell in this particular country, it is practically impossible. And I called them Qcon. I said I didn't know them. I saw the advert in the Guardian and I picked it up and I told them. So then, if they break down our life, we we'll go ahead and do a sixty percent return on investment for for a crop that has a gestation period of maximum six, six months. They could not answer. I knew that and they are in the day that it was a scam. So I will ask him, like Mr. Agama is here, he can take that up, report to say, and see whether he can get his money recovered. But it's definitely not the way that actually had that particular thing. <laughs> I'm actually sure of that, absolutely sure. Hey. Thank you, Mr. Fasado. So for that from HOCON, I think you've, you've gotten the feedback you wanted. Thank you from uh, Mr. Fasado, who heads the uh, way insurance in terms of agri. Sorry, just to join that, I think what Sorry, is... Sorry, I want to say something. <laughs> yes, yes, please. Um, again, I think what is really uh, uh, important is that when there are publications listing a particular insurance company or the other, it's good for the public to actually write that company uh, uh, to confirm uh, the position and get their feedback in writing. I, I think um, uh, a, a brand brand mismanagement or brand theft, you know, may, may be what is in operation. So seeing the name of the company should not be enough to engender trust. I think writing to the company should be what the person should do before they can then say, okay, if this company is part of it, then it must be good. But seeing the name only is not enough because there are a lot of people that pass off brand names uh, illegally. And, and I think I, we, we need to emphasize the importance of always requesting a validation or confirmation from the company that is so stated. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. Thank you. So, um, another question Mr. here Nabi, again. Before you, before yes, you go ahead, can I just add to that? Um, just from an investor perspective, I know that um, on, I know the, the legal team is saying maybe we can validate. validate. Um, I would also suggest maybe um, lead which also maybe they have a section that has all the agri tech firms that they have insured at least something that everybody got at the, at the click of a button we can all quickly look and just tick and just know that um, we, we like do. okay thank we you so much do. we do we yeah, do yeah, yeah yeah so that, I, I think i think we actually have that on our website but like uh madam adiba i just mentioned you only have a lot of these guys that are not that a little bit fraudulent and you just go ahead and copy and paste i've seen instances where I've never talked to that particular detailed platform concerning insuring their project. And the next thing I see, I don't go there. Dalibu is the one that is actually insuring the project. How they do that all the time? So, wow. so it's, it's actually a little bit fun. And that's why I am 120% OR for this particular reg reg regulator for the set. Because it's going to whip everybody to life as simple as that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fatano. Thank you very much. So, I have this other question again from Olu Fumilola. I think it's more similar to the previous question, but let me let me still uh, say it. She says, good day all. Please, what happened to those of us who have invested? So I'll, I'll be directly question to Mr. Fasano again. He said, good day all. Please, what happens to those of us who have invested in some of these crowdfunding companies that are not PLCs and have now defaulted in paying us back our funds? How do we go about recovering our funds from these companies, example, a uh, farm sponsor, Vest, Rich Vest. How can the government now? I got Mr. Gamma is involved there a little bit. How can the government help us to recover such funds? They claim they have invested in real assets, but not willing to sell off these assets to pay us. So it's more like a dilemma there for Olufemilayo, Olufemilola. So, Mr. Mr. Fatano, is there is there any feedback you all want to tell this this person? Akin, before Mr. Fatuna speaks, it's very clear. If there is a fraud, there is a fraud. And we have institutions of government that deal with fraud and fraudulent persons. 
like we have said from the SEC's angle, registration is a hallmark of regulation. If I have not registered a person, it is difficult or more still and more importantly, register the product of the person, there, there is very little that the SEC can do. However, it is important to also inform the SEC. Give us that information, it will be in our data bank. That is number one. Then number two, you have the EFCC, which is the body in, in charge of uh, fraud and, and uh, economic crime. So let them send them their names and then whoever is involved to EFCC so that they can be dealt with. And the police, it's a criminal you know, uh, action. And so it must be dealt with properly with you know, the full weight of the law. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Fatton, do you want to say anything to that? Or would you just continue? Uh, maybe, I was, I was simply going to leverage your Mr. Gamma's response. The okay. agency is an organization that is in charge of uh, recovery. In the scenario where a business transaction was based on fraudulent practices. And I think you should just go ahead and do that line. And suffice to say that even some of these architects performed themselves were on the short end of the stick, especially mm -hmm. during the COVID 19 pandemic. Some of these uh, architect platforms actually supplied the end product to the off the car. The off the car refuses to, 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 to pay them because of, uh, uh, because of COVID 19. Uh, they actually tied it to COVID 19. Some of them did not want to pay them. But at the end of the day, they have to take them to the MCC to go ahead and see if they can recover. So I think that's the best place for them. They are government agencies that are in charge of the public scenario where they are actually for the practices in financial transactions. Thank you, Atul. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. So uh, this is the last question from uh, Kenneth. Uh, so, you want to say something, ma'am? Yeah, yeah. Just to join that, um, I, I think investors have to realize that there are economic changes within the environment, and indeed, COVID nineteen is one of those. A number of businesses were, you know, could not operate, suffered significant economic losses. I don't think we should downplay the fact that you know businesses did suffer. Uh, during the COVID-19. It may not necessarily be fraudulent. It could just be that it suffered as a result of that economic uh, downturn. Even Nigeria went through some level of recession. Uh, so um, I just don't want us to leave the floor by talking about the blame COVID-19. COVID-19 was a real issue for lots of businesses, whether we take platform or, or real business, uh, uh, physical business that people can touch. Uh, Nigeria also suffered. So it's, it's, it's important we have that there so we don't get the wrong impression. Thank you. Muted, Mr. Lavi. My apologies, please. My, my sincere apologies. You know, uh, it seems that most of the questions we have here are more or less questions that have been answered now. You know, those that have been beaten by the crowdfunding operations, those who have you know put some their money into the business, but are not are not been able to get their money back, are those actually coming on board to ask several questions, and particularly to to Libya, it's more about compliance, you know, compliance, the brand identity, and, and all that. So I'm going to ask the the, the last questions, but I'll, the last question now I'll turn it to Ms. Sadek Bayi just to answer us on the, on the on the last question. So this is from um, Ola de Popo Olufo Wobi. Now uh, the person is saying I have seen a few adverts. In the public from crowdfund from crowdfund seeking business with a footer insured by Lidway. What is SEC? What is SEC doing to regulate adverts in public, in public, particularly those seeking to mislead investors with the insurance undertone? Uh, should Mr. Gama not answer that? Because they're asking okay. us to regulate. regulate because I, the, the, the word leadway, you know, because it's more like using yeah. leadway brand identity to. Exactly. To so I, I, I would, I would set discipline us or regulate <laughs> us or regulate the proper use of our brands. I guess maybe that's the question. Well, uh, at uh, the last time I checked, leadway was a capital market operator. Uh, I don't know if they have uh, withdrawn their license yet. Uh, anyway, so somehow, somehow, they they are part of us. But uh, even at that, the question is, what do we do, or what are we doing? I'm happy to inform you that uh, uh, very recently, just about a month ago, the SEC 
had uh, an MOU with APCON, Advertising Practitioners uh, Council of Nigeria. And one of the things we uh, are aiming to do was actually to regulate advertisements that are untrue. So before they come out, you know, they are already seen and they are going to be disapproved from being advertised. So that is on. We are also in, in uh, you know, in talks with other agencies of government that uh, have uh, regulatory powers over these kinds of advertisement. Because the truth about it is that when somebody reads an advertisement on the paper or hears over a radio, and uh, you know, they tend to believe. But like we have discovered, a lot of them are untrue. You know, they, you know, it's uh, contrived with the with the intent of defrauding the unsuspecting investors and the SEC, you know, France at that very, very greatly. And we'll continue to do our best to make sure that the investors are protected. That's our responsibility and we hold that very dearly. And we'll definitely do what we can do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank uh, you uh, very uh, much. Uh, uh, let me quickly add to that before we okay, sign sir. On, on our part two, part of the revalidation process says forth is that uh, uh, architect platform, we have to pull down a little bit of their website export mm. until the validation process is completed so that we're able to now see the width from the shaft and ensure that there's compliance so that we don't get sanctioned by this part of the discussion we'll be having in the coming weeks so that nobody will now go ahead and indiscriminately use that logo without actually getting a uh, Getting approval for in the in, in the previous instance, what we do is that uh, when we are signing you off on that particular partnership agreement, if you comply with those requirements, using our logo becomes part and parcel of the process. But right now, it's no it's no longer going to be so. So you have to put out that particular logo. Ensure the first and foremost is that ensure you get clarity from SEC. If that is done, we we'll go ahead and validate your processes there before we give the approval of that particular logo, so that uh, nobody should go ahead and. Uh, indiscriminately using that particular legal brand logo without uh, getting proper approval and without complying with sex regulation on craft body. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Fatano. To this end, uh, we're going to call an end to the panel session. It's quite uh, a huge discussion, basically, on crowdfunding, the regulations from the agri-tech to the farmers, what needs to be done and what needs to do to also develop the agri ecosystem at large. Uh, I want to say thank you very much, Mr. Agama. You have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful year. Very an amazing speaker. You, I love the way you, you put in jokes into your discussion. It makes it lively and uh, carry everybody along with some level of uh, uh, perception that, yes, this is the future. Then also, um, I want to thank uh, Mr. Fatono, uh, wonderful person, wonderful person I've known for a very long number of years, a deep person that understands agri insurance business in Nigeria today, one of the leading uh, practitioners in that field. I also want to thank uh, the ED, uh, Ms. Uh, Adebayi. Thank you very much for being part of this panel session. And I also want to thank uh, Mrs. Senami. You, <laughs> you are basically the person that, yes, I have to follow through this process. I want to say thank you again for joining us. It's been awesome having you here. Uh, Grove's team, thank you very much. So to this end, we're going to call the panel session to an end and uh, move straight down to the closing uh, remarks. And to do the closing remarks for us, we'll be having um, the ED General Insurance of Leadway Assurance uh, Company. Uh, that is Miss Adetola Adebayi that will be doing the closing remarks for us. And also, uh, there will be polls. I will be going, will be, will be, will be, will be, will be uh, pulled up so that we polls so that we can actually uh, vote. Or sorry, sorry, uh, <laughs> I said vote. Uh, polls so that we can actually have some questions to uh, answer. And uh, before that, uh, the ED will come on board now to give us the closing remarks as we end this discussion on understanding the new SEC regulations on crowdfunding in Nigeria uh, by Agritech platforms. So over to you now, Ms. Adebayi, for the closing remarks. Uh, thank you, Mr. Alabi. Uh, first of all, let me thank uh, Mr. Agama. Um, when Mr. Alabi said, oh, uh, please round up, we will have the panel se uh, you know, uh, session, I panicked a bit. And I said, oh, but what he's saying is still important to, to the audience. 
you know, yes. and uh, luckily there were also other people that uh, were more or less uh, in, intended on also listening further to him. So um, thank you uh, for for this, uh, for handing the session, for being the main paper presenter. Uh, two hours gone, uh, starting from 11, and we're just gone uh, past one o'clock now. Uh, thank you, Mr. Labi, for anchoring. Um, thank you. You've uh, been a player within the market as well. I guess it's all fluid and quite easy for you to flow through. And uh, thank you, Ms. Amusu, uh, for joining and for also being the key parts uh, within the uh, market association uh, that would also ensure that we um, ensure that this particular process of raising funds is viable and is trustworthy. And all that you know, the law does is really to enable and encourage trust. Uh, for us at Lidway Assurance, um, this is part of our knowledge uh, exchange series. And insurance is an esoteric product that not many people understand. Uh, a lot of people do not understand the limitation of insurance. So we use these opportunities as well uh, to let people know what insurance is and what insurance is not. So thank you for the audience uh, that I've stayed through. Um, we didn't lose uh, any of our audience, which means that the session is, is quite engaging. Uh, so we thank the participating audience. In fact, we gained more as we as we progress. We didn't really lose. We started with about 77 attendees. And as at this point, we have one or five attendees. So I, th I think it just shows um, the importance of the subject matter, uh, whether for the investor or for the investee uh, person looking for opportunity to make money. Uh, Agric is one of the... Um, uh, um, leading contributors to our GDP. And it's an area that is in focus. Uh, even the paper this morning uh, mentioned something about the anchor borrower scheme uh, not being quite profitable uh, to, to a certain extent. Uh, but I think there's probably more of um, a request for private investors also to go into this uh, agri area, but possibly also in other, if we, if we borrow from other countries, uh, go by cooperative means. Uh, one of the um, major um, juice producers in the US, uh, I think they're called cooperative of farmers. And I think that's, a, I, I think we've all heard, or maybe we've even seen their products in Nigeria supermarket, Florida. Uh, Florida Juice Company is basically a, a cooperative based juice company. Uh, so they have their farmers, they have their growers, and then they produce the juice. So hopefully uh, with our, in our country, uh, with people who are trying their best to ensure that there is an um, economically viable way of funding farm, you know, farm investments, we need to continue to encourage them and we will always you know, encourage them and also help all of us within the value chain to understand that the law protects us and insurance enables progress. And that is really the, the, the message I want to leave us with. So thank you very much uh, for everyone this afternoon for a wonderful uh, two plus hour session. Uh, wish us all the very best and look forward to um, other engaging sessions. Uh, uh, Mr. Lavi, look forward to you engaging, engaging us again as well. Thank you. For being, uh, thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. All right. Thank you very much, Ma. So to this end, we call it a wrap for the whole discussion about understanding the new SEC regulations guiding crowdfunding in Nigeria by Agritech platform. Thank you very much, everybody, and uh, see you soon on another discussion. Thank you very much.